Our problem on the entrapment overreaching government activities defense was that the Supreme Court had always said if you're predisposed, you can't raise the defense. However, there were some recent cases. The last Supreme Court case was a while back, and there were some recent cases, including one called United States v. Russell from out on the West Coast, that it said the government can sometimes go so far that predisposition doesn't matter. That was obviously what we wanted. And so I thought we had a good argument with the judge that at least uh, uh, something like that should be said. But what happened is, in the fall of 72, the Supreme Court accepted review in the Russell case. So this meant sometime in probably the winter or spring or late June at the latest, uh, there was going to be a decision coming down, and I was afraid that it was going to reaffirm the long-standing Supreme Court rule that if you're predisposed, you can't raise any of these defenses, no variations allowed. So uh, what I did was I thought we'd better be heard on this, and I approached the ACLU, and working with their lawyers, we wrote a brief that basically presented this whole problem and attached Bob Hardy's affidavit. So we, we in a way, were presenting them with the Camden 28 case, and so I approached the ACLU, and with their lawyers, we did an amicus brief about the law of entrapment and overreaching government activity, and basically urged the court to say that they could be a case where the government goes just too far, and that uh, as a matter of justice, the court should allow uh, the defendants to raise that defense, which would then be heard by the jury. Uh, so we did this brief, and we actually used it as an opportunity to present the Camden 28 case uh, to the Supreme Court. And we were basically saying, actually explicitly saying, look, here's a completely politicized uh, prosecution. Uh, you've got defendants who are trying to stop a war. You've got um, a government that couldn't care less about law enforcement and just wants to stop the movement against the war. So, and in that context, you've got the FBI spending huge resources, time, and uh, basically making sure that this raid happens, paying for all the tools, etc. Uh, and we, we argued that, well, even if generally predisposition should mean you can't raise the defense, in a case like this, um, there should be an exception. And you shouldn't, in the Supreme Court, you shouldn't foreclose any uh, exception. Well, the decision came down, as I recall, it was just a matter of days uh, before our case went to the jury and um, used just the language uh, we wanted. They did say predisposition was uh, still the crucial issue. If someone's predisposed, they can't raise the defense. But they went on to say the government could go far enough uh, doing something that was uh, basically unfair, shocking the sense of conscience of the community, uh, that the defense would be allowed even though the defendants were predisposed. And so we argue to Judge Fisher, that's the Camden 28 exception. Look, here's the amicus brief. We presented our case, and you got, you got a, a, a mandate from the Supreme Court to at least leave it up to the jury. Uh, and uh, he agreed. And you, you see in his charge is the exact words of that exception from the Russell case. That's the charge. I, I still get calls by lawyers in drug cases, you know, in all sorts of cases. I want to get that charge. How do you get that charge? And uh, nobody's gotten it before or after.